Hey guys, what is going on? Jurgen from Zergrino Sports here, and today we are coming at you with the February 8th edition of Raw Review. Quickly before we get into it, quick self-plug time. If you would like to support me and the channel, you can do so over at Patreon. First link in the description. If not, that's a okay. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the show down in the comments. And if at the end of the review you like what I said and you like the review, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, that'd be great. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the review, which I guess is what I say now. It, I, it sounds kind of corny, but I mean like... It comes naturally uh, in my speech pattern. But anyways, um, <clears throat> there was, uh, to start the show, there was a promo package about the Sheamus heel turn, uh, which is pretty inconsequential. It was just whatever. Uh, then Adam Pierce was in the ring and introduced Shane McMahon, who said that he was here to make an announcement. Uh, and the announcement was that Drew McIntyre will defend the WWE Championship in the Elimination Chamber. Um, all of the... Five competitors are former WWE champions, uh, and the competitors are Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, The Miz, and Sheamus. Uh, Shane tells that Pierce uh, tells Pierce that he's doing an amazing job by making this match, then leaves. AJ comes out, says, "Yeah, you know what? Uh, hey, you are doing." Uh, AJ and Shane kind of had like a little stare down a little bit at the top of the ramp. Uh, AJ comes out, he says he agrees with Shane, says that uh, Pierce is doing a good job, uh, the chances of Drew losing are, pun intended, phenomenal, uh, so he's doing a good job, which is a surprise because he always thought of Pierce as a dumbass, um, and he says that he's going to give everybody a preview of, of what's going to you know, happen in Elimination Chamber or whatever and tells Pierce to get out of the ring, um, and then... Uh, we cut to commercial. I don't know if Jeff already started making his entrance or not, uh, but it, it uh, doesn't really matter because when we come back from commercial, we have Drew talking to Shane while Shane's getting in a limo. Drew's like, hey, after everything we've been, few, been through, I would have thought you would have given me a heads up. Um, and, you know, I thought I'd be facing Sheamus one-on-one. -on -one. Um Shane says that they needed something big for the Elimination Chamber, and what's bigger than Drew running the gauntlet or defending against five people at once kind of thing. Um, and then uh, and then he he goes off in his limousine. Now, I uh, I have some problems with this. Uh, some some major, some minor. Um, I I I don't like typically when they just put people in an elimination chamber match um sometimes it'll make sense because maybe like you'll be like hey you all are worthy of a shot you know fuck it chuck them all in there um but when you just kind of put people in the match for no reason like two weeks out because it's a week from this sunday the elimination chamber pay-per-view when you uh when you just kind of announce people, it kind of, it, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, you're giving up a lot of storyline potential by announcing uh, the people who were in just by announcing them. Also, the people that they chose to be in, um, it's not that great. In my opinion, I don't really, uh, I think some people didn't really need to be in there. Um, I think you could have benefited by having some different people in there. Um and uh, once again, just qualifiers would have been so good. They had so, like, imagine this, right? They're doing the Ali and Kofi feud. So to advance that feud, guess what? You could have Kofi win a qualifier for the Elimination Chamber match. You could have Ali not even get a qualifier. That way he can continue his, hey, the system is against me, but they're going to reward the, you know, yes man who dances when they say dance kind of gimmick that he's going on against Kofi. Um... You know what I mean? You could have that happen, so he can put that over as injustice, blah, 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 leading into it, and then, you know, do what Edge did at in 2009 or whenever it was, um, when Kofi's about to get into the chamber, have Ali come out, beat up Kofi, and take his spot. You know, Kofi took his spot through way of injury before, now you can have Ali take his spot that writes itself. By not giving an Ali a chance to get in the, in the chamber itself, you can build up his gimmick and continue it. Um, and then eventually, you know, you can give him a strong performance in the chamber. And obviously he shouldn't win it or anything. 
but give him a strong performance in the chamber, and then you can go on to do Kofi and Ali at Mania with Co- uh, with uh, Ali winning, which would put him over. They missed out on that really, really hard because that would have been a good storyline, you know, continuation for them. Um, another thing that they missed out on is potentially um, you you could have potentially set up Keith Lee and Drew for Mania uh, if you would if you wanted to. Um, because what I feel like they're going to do is now that it's Elimination Chamber, they're just going to do the singles between Drew and Sheamus at Fastlane and then have Drew face whoever, uh, maybe a triple threat at uh, Mania or something. Um, but what you could have done is had Sheamus and Keith Lee in a, um, in a qualifier for the Rumble, right? Not the Rumble, the Chamber. And then you could have also, you could have had Drew get involved and cost... Uh, Keith Lee just to say like hey like I said I would give him a match the the management decided against it I need to get retribution against him and beat his ass so I'm sorry Keith Lee I had to do it um so then you could set up Keith Lee to be you know to to turn heel on Drew and uh this is just a personal preference thing you could you could align Keith Lee with the Hurt business if you wanted to you could have MVP like take him aside backstage and be like hey you know you being the nice guy and trying to be everybody's friends that's not going to get you anywhere you know join us and we can get you somewhere and then you could um you know, grow the Hurt Business, add another member to them. You could set up Drew and Keith Lee later down the line, and then you get Sheamus and um, Drew's storyline advanced. So I just think that they they missed out on a couple opportunities. Um, I don't really think Jeff needs to be in the Elimination Chamber match for a WWE Championship. I, and I, I get that some people are going to, you know, respond by saying, oh, the way they earned it is because they were World Heavyweight Champions. But that would be like um, going up to somebody, go, going up to Matt Sarah and giving him a match against Kamaru Usman. Just because you were champion doesn't mean you're deserving of a championship now. It means you used to be great, sure. Yeah, it means you still have that greatness in you somewhere, sure, but it doesn't mean you automatically should get a title match just out of nowhere. Um, So I don't like Jeff being in it. AJ being in it makes sense to me because he's been winning consistently, but a qualifier would have been great. Um, Miz doesn't really need to be in there because Miz has money in the bank. If you wanted to do something, you could have put Priest in there and had him be the last guy against Drew, although we know who the last guy against Drew is going to be because Fiend's going to get involved in the chamber it just it, that writes itself as well but um randy being in there is fine um for me um jeff i don't really like in there miz i don't really like in there sheamus and aj are fine in there but have them qualify have have sheamus beat um keith lee like i said with drew interference for for a spot have aj aj and jeff have a match which we're gonna get to have aj beat jeff for the qualifier and put aj in that way have randy beat somebody for the qualifier have kofi beat somebody for the qualifier and then have uh who's left uh, oh, yeah, no, there's a fifth spot. You could give that to anybody. Give it to somebody else. Give it to Priest, maybe. Like I said, you could put Priest in there instead of Miz. Have have Priest maybe beat Miz for a spot in there or beat Morrison or something. I don't know. Um, and then, you know, you could have Priest, like, eliminate three people and make him look strong. He doesn't need to win the match to look strong, particularly in the Elimination Chamber. It would kind of suck to give him a loss quickly after calling him up, but um, it is an option. Um, not, I'm not saying it's the best option, but it's it's just better than being like, hey, you guys used to be really good. Uh, here you go. Here's a shot. You know what I mean? Especially for Jeff, because Jeff's been like 50-50 booked recently, or he had a bunch of losses, then he had a couple wins and losses. Um, Miz hasn't been booked strong, really. Um, AJ has. Randy's been kind of wishy-washy with the booking because he's had a lot of story going on, which is fine. Um, And then Sheamus, he's been built fairly strong. Um, Not really so much in singles competition, but I mean, like, yeah, it's just, it doesn't... I just think they missed a huge opportunity. Um... I saw some people on Twitter complaining about the fact that the Elimination Chamber exists to begin with uh, because, um, like, Edge just beat 29 people for a championship match, so five people getting one doesn't make sense. The thing is, the Rumble win is for a championship match at Mania. 
And within kayfabe, that's better than an Elimination Chamber match right now because an, uh, you get to choose your opponent at Mania, right? So you get to choose who you think will give you the best advantage to win. You get to main event Mania, so it gets, it gets you know, um, cemented in history and you get a bigger payday than you would at Elimination Chamber fighting at Mania. So within kayfabe, it makes sense you know, that the Rumble win is higher regarded. It doesn't really matter that there's other people getting a shot right now because it doesn't take away from the Mania, the the Rumble winner getting their shot at Mania. They get their shot at Mania regardless of what's going on between now and Mania. So, th- like, it doesn't affect them in my opinion. So I, I don't really get that criticism. Um, but the criticism that I had, like I, I just explained, is that it wasn't with qualifiers and they just gave old champions a spot. Um you could have you could have done some really good easy you know logical booking with Kofi and Ali you could have done some logical booking with Keith Lee Sheamus and Drew and then you could have had AJ beat somebody for the qualifier Randy beat some you know what i mean it's just you could have done more and you missed out on it because just announcing hey in 2 weeks we have this match here's who's in it get hyped doesn't really do much to me or for me, sorry. But anyways, uh, we had AJ versus Jeff next, which is a good match in ring. It was it was it was really good. I mean, both are great wrestlers. Um, they had AJ kind of working the knee throughout the throughout the match. Uh, Jeff went to do like a little dive thing. I think it might have been um, the uh, the whisper in the wind or whatever. Um, or something else, but he landed on his knee kind of shit, he goes outside of the ring to recover, uh, AJ goes around, chop block, uh, does a, like, knee breaker, and then, uh, throws him knee first into the post or something, and they go to commercial, um, they wrestle a little bit more, uh, Jeff ends up hitting a twist of fate somewhere near the end of the match, um, but because of his knee being so damaged, it took, it takes him too long to get up onto the rope for the swanton, so AJ has recovered and moves out of the way when Jeff goes for the swanton, puts in the calf crusher, and causes, uh, Jeff Hardy to tap this would have been a great match if it was a if it was a chamber qualifier aj could get into the chamber by defeating jeff because the whole thing with jeff is that he's pretty much in limbo until there are fans because they're waiting for fans to bring back no more words and pretty much jeff's not going to really be doing much of note until then um so yeah like you don't really need jeff in that match um for me personally so um this could have been a great qualifier and then have aj get a strong win going into it but yeah the the match itself was great uh they got a decent amount of time too so that was fine um then we had a riddle and keith lee backstage segment uh where keith's like oh hey uh they they have a match later tonight by the way Uh, it was announced by commentary i think um Keith Lee's like, hey, my opponent for tonight with a black eye, uh, you okay or something like that? And then Riddle's like, yeah, laughter is the best medicine. You know, I've been watching all the Air Bud movies. Um, and then Keith, Lee, Keith Lee's like, oh, it looks like Lashley, you know, knocked a few screws loose. Are you sure you want to keep pursuing that championship? Um And then, uh, you know, Riddle talks about how uh, the dog in Air Bud uh, was told it was crazy to think they could play basketball and they did it anyways kind of thing. Um and then uh, Keith says that it might be time for someone new. Um, he says that uh, Keith Keith says that he has what it takes to beat Lashley and what it takes to beat Riddle tonight. Riddle's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll see you out there. Uh, so decent little backstage segment. Uh, this was one of the Riddle comedy segments that I liked. It got a little chuckle out of me. Um, so no problems there. Uh, Seamus then asks Pierce backstage what the deal is about the chamber. He asks him if uh, he's saying that uh, Seamus himself is not a draw. Um, to which Pierce responds, no, that's not what I'm saying. It's just we needed something, you know, big for Elimination Chamber. Uh, Seamus says he gets it. Drew's the shiny new toy. They want to protect him, whatever. But when he goes in the chamber and just kills everybody, pretty much, it's Pierce's responsibility. So that's fine. Um, Drew and Sheamus both want the singles match. They're asking why it wasn't made to happen. So that's fine. Um, that was good. It advances the story. And then we had New Day versus Slapjack and T-Bar. I had always thought that T-Bar and Mace would have been the preferable uh, tag team pairing between Retribution. Um, but... There isn't really a preferable tag team pairing for Retribution because there's not a preferable singles guy for Retribution, in my opinion. Um, I can't see anybody in Retribution other than Ali um, 
being a champion, which which really is not a good sign about a stable. If you have a stable um, and you book them in a way where nobody can see them realistically being a champion, you're not really building them up that great. Um, so, and that's not on the talent. That's just the way that they've been booked because obviously they're obviously doing the best they can with what they're given every week. It's not really down to them, but uh, yeah. Uh, Ali was on commentary. Uh, he was talking about how he speaks a foreign language in WWE, which is the truth, which I really liked that as a saying. Uh, he talks about how Kofi and the rest of the New Day have eaten. When does Ali get to eat? Meaning, you know, like they've had championships. They've had this and that. When is it Ali's turn? Which I like. Um, Kofi did a dive to the outside and he was smiling during it, which I popped for. Um now, New Day won the match with Kofi pinning Slapjack after a little sequence. Um, Ali yells at everybody in the ring for failing him. And uh, he says up to the ramp to Kofi that uh, he'll give his life to get retribution on Kofi, which I really like. Ali's doing his absolute best to get this over. And Ali's a great promo, and he's doing a really good job of advancing the feud as best as he can, given the kind of limitations that they shackle on the act uh, that is retribution. Um, uh, Woods kept talking about how he wants a uh, best of five tiebreaker with Reckoning. I get that he's trying to be funny, and I get that it's whatever, um, but it's just it just blatantly points out how 50-50 booking exists. He's trying to put a light spin on it. Yeah, it is whatever, but I'm not personally on board with it. Like, yeah, haha, you want to match with, with the woman in the team because tiebreaker, because 50-50 booking, we got to break the tie. Like, it's, it's whatever. Um... It just highlights that 50-50 booking exists in the WWE uh, on a regular basis. 50-50 booking can sometimes be useful. Um, you know what I mean? If you're doing like a best of seven, you kind of have to 50-50 book until the person gets the win. 50-50 um, booking can sometimes very rarely work, uh, but WWE uses it for every single feud, every single time. So it just kind of... People rarely get over... Um, and it's just being highlighted by, you know, Woods asking for a match with Reckoning. Like, oh, we're two for two. It's like, yeah, you're making a meme. I get it. But it's not really funny. It just kind of highlights the flaws of the programming. So, um, yeah. Uh, they had a quick shot of Priest and Bad Bunny backstage where Priest asks Bad Bunny if he's uh, going to be in his corner for tonight. Uh, which uh, he says, yeah, for sure. Because Priest has announced to have a match against Garza later. I think they had announced by now that Lana and Nia Jax would have a tables match. Not through commentary, but through match graphics. For, from little, many little overlaying graphics during the matches with, with act, no like audio recognition verbal recognition of it um they had a rick and lacy promo uh where um rick said he's here because he doesn't take orders from any woman uh, and he's not staying home uh he says that lacy has everything needed to be a star and she just kind of needs to learn from somebody like rick and needs the guidance uh he says this is a casual relationship um you know, she's just here to learn. If she's, you know, taken aback by my charm, that's just how whatever happens. Uh, but basically, he says that uh, Lacey is coming for Asuka and her title. Lacey says that she treats Rick like the legend he is um, and that she would never speak to her dad the way that Charlotte speaks to hers. Uh, but she's the bad guy for some reason, despite how Charlotte treats her dad. Charlotte comes out. Uh, says that if Lacey really wanted to learn, she'd go to the P uh, Performance Center, uh, but she just wants to use the Flair name to advance her career. Um, she asks Rick if he needs her validation, says that she never told Rick that she didn't want his help, which she fucking literally has on programming, so that was funny. Uh, just once again highlighting how awful of a face promo she is. Um... She says she doesn't care who Rick manages, just don't bring her down too. Lacey says that they can work together and be a tag team because she's better than that uh, feral animal, Asuka, or something like that. Um, and then Charlotte says that uh, she's been trying to prove herself to, to Rick and to the fans at home and stuff. So once again, um, for the millionth time, I, I, I guarantee you nobody who works at WWE watches these. Uh, but if, for the on the off chance that somebody, you know, in the WWE system happens to watch this. 
You have shoved Charlotte Flair down our throats for fucking five years now. You don't need her in a prove yourself storyline. And to be, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help her. It doesn't help Rick. And it doesn't help Lacey. You're not helping anybody. You're wasting everybody's time. And you're, pr- you're putting out shit programming pretty much. You don't need Charlotte and a prove yourself angle. And uh, again, off, on the off chance that somebody within WWE is watching this, you don't need Charlotte to win the championship. Keep it on Oscar or give it to Rhea Ripley. You don't need Charlotte as champion. You have oversaturated her to the fucking point that I pretty much want to go take a shit anytime she's on the product. And that's one of your best in-ring workers. And I'm a fan of the in-ring, in-ring maybe more than the, like, I, I'm a fan of everything as a, as a um, like, package deal. Like, the, the storylines and the in-ring needs to be good for me to be fully involved. But I would probably rather have um, only good in-ring with no good story rather than good story with no good in-ring. Um, so I'm a guy who, who values the in-ring product a lot and Charlotte is one of the best you have in that division. And even though she had a match tonight, which we'll get to, I wanted to go take a shit and not even watch because of how fucking much they've oversaturated her. Less is more. It's not more is more. Okay. Less is more fucking please, man. Stop with shoving her down our throats. You, you guys fucking got the message with Roman and then you turned him heel and you fucking made him the best thing in the company. Stop fucking trying to do a prove yourself bullshit angle with Charlotte Flair in 2021. It's not needed and nobody cares. Um, but anyways, uh, Lacey says that uh, because of Rick, she heard through management that she would get a title opportunity if she were to beat Charlotte. Charlotte says, oh, you want to go? Let's do it right now. Uh, Lacey gets the cheap shot, attacks her on the outside. We go to commercial. We come back. Uh, Miz and Morrison are uh, saying that they have Garza's back backstage before the match starts. Uh, just a quick production thing here. If, if you have two people who went to brawl, like they, they, a cheap shot was had before commercial, you come back from commercial, why would Charlotte or Lacey be waiting to wrestle for a backstage segment to be done? It's, it's these production things that I always hate, where like they have somebody make an entrance, you go to commercial, we come back, we have a promo backstage, and then you have the second entrance. Like, who the fuck is in charge of the production angle of the side of this? Like, Why? It doesn't make any sense. Um, but anyways, uh, we had Charlotte versus Lacey. Uh, there was a point where Charlotte was arguing with Rick outside, which gave Lacey some, uh, you know, a chance to get some cheap offense in. Um, eventually, Lacey goes for the figure four near the end of the match with Rick encouraging her. Uh, Lacey doesn't really know how to do it, so she can't get it in. Charlotte breaks out of it. Uh, she yells something at Rick about how if she wants to, if he wants to embarrass her, do it on his own time, which I mean... He's there in his own time, so I, I, I don't. Re- Again, she's not a good face. Um, she, uh, she unloads on Lacey in the corner. Uh, ref gets to the four or five count, pushes her away. She pushes the ref, uh, who calls a DQ. She continues to unload, kind of thing. I think she pushed the ref one more time after that when he tried to break it up. Um, and then kind of Rick gets involved and gets in the way. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, when Charlotte uh, interrupted the promo, she uh, she made Rick, she was like, Rick, open the ropes for me. And then she he went to do it. And Lacey was like, no, no, don't do that. And then a ref came and opened the ropes for her. Uh, she made a ref open the ropes for her to leave as well. So um, shit segment, awful segment. Uh, there's just so many issues. Like, like I highlighted already, you don't need to prove yourself Charlotte Angle in 2021. You're not helping anybody in here get over. You don't need to help Rick get over, so that's whatever. But you're not you're not helping Charlotte at all, and you're not helping Lacey. Lacey, nobody's going to go back and remember like, oh, hey, remember when Lacey was a flair to fuck with Charlotte? They're going to be like, hey, remember that shitty Charlotte prove yourself angle that they did in 2021? Oh, man, that sucked. Nobody's going to mention Lacey. You're not getting Lacey over. She's just an afterthought in the feud. Um, So it doesn't help Lacey. It doesn't help Charlotte. You don't need to help Rick, but it doesn't help Rick. Um, It's just uh, the the match itself wasn't even good because it was just very sloppy. There were a lot of points where like somebody like ran in for something or like moved into a pocket of space and then just kind of waited for the other person to do what was meant to be done. Um, so I don't know if there was communication issues or if there was timing issues. Like, I don't really know why the match was so sloppy. Um, 
Uh, a lot of Charlotte's matches have been kind of sloppy since she came back, though, so I don't know. Um, but the match, it's, the match itself was a shit-quality match. It wasn't very good. Um, the the way that... It, they have Charlotte as a babyface, but she only does heal shit. Treating her father like shit, heal. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, pushing refs, heal. Making the refs open the ropes for them, heal. Uh, causing a DQ purposefully, heal. You know, like, she's doing all this heal shit, but they have her as the face in the in the feud, which I'm probably, you know, it's probably their intention because they're, they want to tease the breakup and they want to use, like, oh, she's been teasing it the whole time, but it's not teasing. It's just full out, she's a heel already, but you're calling her a face. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, her promos are shit as a face. Just overall, the whole storyline's been garbage, and the segment was garbage. Um, so, yeah, probably the, the maybe the worst part of the night, I think, was the Charlotte and Lacey stuff. It just wasn't great. Uh, later on, it gets announced that Lacey is getting a women's title match against Asuka at uh, Elimination Chamber because, you know, she said if she could beat Charlotte, you know, she gets the title shot. A DQ win is still a win, uh, which I'm fine with that because they, they laid out the precedent that if she wins, she gets the shot and she won the match. Um, so I'm fine with her getting the match because they laid out that precedent. It's just like... The whole segment's like, why? You know what I mean? Um, then we had an Edge promo who said he has an amazing week, but he has a decision to make. Um, the decision may sound simple, but uh, to somebody like him, it's a, it's a much deeper decision. He was close to making his decision, but the landscape has changed. Uh, he likes his odds against everyone in the chamber, but he doesn't like Drew's odds against everyone in the chamber. So he's going to wait until the dust settles from chamber. And then he gets interrupted by Ms. Morrison and Garza. Ms. Moxham uh, says he's an opportunist while Ms. is a strategist. Um, so he's going to strategize and says that, uh, you know, if he wins a mania, regardless of which title it is, he will be there to win. Uh, Edge says, listen, I put money in the bank on the map. I know a little something about it it um and you didn't need to tell me i know i'm gonna have my head on a swivel but if i didn't know you just reminded me because you just told me what you were gonna do kind of thing um you just revealed everything you're gonna do so you should worry about the chamber about priest about bad bunny um and uh edge mentions, mentions how they think on different levels um says that miz is content with being awesome edge is not because he did that 20 years ago uh says that miz talks about wanting to be the champion while edge needs to be the champion which is the difference between them and then he walks off so uh good edge promo once again, Edge is a fantastic promo, so there's no surprise there that he would drop a good promo as I fucking make a lot of noise opening the pages because a couple of them kind of got uh, put together. But here we go. We had Priest uh, with Bad Bunny, I guess, accompanying him versus Garza with Miz and Morrison accompanying him. Uh, Priest has a pretty cool entrance. Once again, I don't really watch NXT, so I don't know if he had the same entrance in NXT, but he kind of like does the arrow motion towards uh, the Titan Tron and then it's, you know, shows up with his name and shit. It's pretty cool. Um, they they had a little moment uh, in the middle of the match where Miz kind of hits Priest when he's hung over the ropes leading to the outside and the ref isn't paying attention. Um... And then Garza, and then Bad Bunny gets on the apron to complain, and then Garza throws his pants at him. Um, so a little just moment there. Uh, there was a Miz and Morrison distraction, uh, which then Priest turned around to get clotheslined over the top rope, and then uh, Garza distracts the ref as Miz and Morrison start beating him down. Bad Bunny goes over, grabs the briefcase, and he's like, "Hey, I have your briefcase, haha!" Um, Morrison chases him, uh, chases after him with it. He throws the briefcase into the ring. Morrison goes in with the briefcase. Uh, the ref sees this. He's like, okay, you and Miz, you're ejected. Um, and then Garza's like talking shit with Bad Bunny on the outside, turns around to try and swing at Priest. He swings, misses, rotates, uh, gets hit with that thing that Priest does where he like claps in front of them. So like his forearms, like, you know, compress your ears kind of thing. Um, and then he does his finish and Priest gets the win over Garza. Um, it, it's, a, it's another uh, screwy finish for Priest, which isn't that great. Um, a clean win, of course, would be great. I think they're probably delaying the clean win for a little bit. Honestly, I could I could see them doing Priest and Bad Bunny versus Miz and Morrison at Mania, uh, which honestly would be fine because Priest is going to win. 
and people are going to watch Mania because of Bad Bunny. And uh, so the thing is, I feel like a lot of people might not like that Bad Bunny's involved because he's a rap guy. He's not, you know, um, he's not like the typical music wrestling fans would like for wrestling. You know, the harder stuff like the rock and the metal and stuff like that, which like fair enough. I, I prefer rock music. And, and, and like more metal stuff for wrestling because I fit it, I feel it fits the scene more. Um, however, Bad Bunny, he's a huge star right now. So that's exposure. Um, it helps Priest get over a lot. It puts eyes on the product. The most important thing that I like about Bad Bunny being involved is that he's actually a wrestling fan. So he's actually trying to just be part of the segment. You know what I mean? Like how many celebrities have gone on to, on to, you know, WWE when they were doing like the guest GM shit or since then. And they kind of like treat it as a joke. They're just like, oh, I'm here to get paid. I'm going to get uh, some of these people to watch my shit maybe. And then whatever. You know what I mean? Like they go on there and they treat it as a joke. Um... Bad Bunny is just actually a wrestling fan, so he's actually just trying to be part of the show and be in the segments and, you know, fulfill the segments to what they need to be. Um, so he's not making a mockery of it while being on there, so I like that. Um, and again, he puts eyes on Priest, and if they want to push Priest, like, getting eyes on Priest through Bad Bunny is not a bad way to do it. Because um, Priest has the look, you know what I mean? I think I, I might have said it last week, but, like, if somebody who's a fan of Bad Bunny is like, oh, he's on Raw, let me turn on Raw right um and then they see him with priest they see priest immediately they're like damn dude long hair tattoos fucking pretty cut like pretty lean tall ass dude big dude oh shit he's athletic in the ring he's doing shit that a guy of his size probably shouldn't be able to do you know what i mean it's just it's a domino effect of you turning into a fan of damian priest because you know initially you get the bad bunny rub i guess we'll call it and then the look sells you a little bit and then the in-ring sells you and you're like, oh shit, I like this guy. Maybe I'm going to tune in to see him do more. And then maybe if you tune in to see him do more, you tune in, tune in to see the people he wrestles. And then if you like somebody he wrestles, oh shit, you're going to watch other people he wrestles. And then sooner or later, you're just watching wrestling. Um, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's good for the product, especially because Bad Bunny's actually like cares and he's, you know, taking it seriously kind of thing. Uh, he's not making a mockery of it. So, um... Yeah, like, again, a clean win would probably be better, especially because Garza hasn't wrestled on Raw since, like, fucking, oh, fuck, like, November, December, something like that, like, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously there were the rumors that uh, Garza was going to get a push because Vince liked him, and then that went nowhere, but... Um, yeah, so Priest, uh, Priest getting a win is good. Um, once again... Would a clean win have been better? Yeah, sure. But if Vince does like Garza, it protects Garza, the finish, a little bit. Um, and then Priest still gets the win. Bad Bunny gets involved. So overall, I think it's a positive uh, segment. Um, but hopefully they give him that clean win soon because you will need that sooner or later. Um, we had a Drew backstage interview where he was asked about the chamber. Um he says that in Mania season, you should expect the unexpected, like he should have expected Sheamus. Uh, he said that uh, if Sheamus was willing to throw away 20 years of friendship for a title shot, all he actually had to do was ask. Um, so he has other ideas of why he turned, but, you know, he, he doesn't need to worry about that right now because tonight he has to worry about Randy. He knows that the target on his back is huge. Um because he's got Randy tonight and at the chamber. He's got Sheamus. He's got AJ. He's got Jeff. Uh, he's got Edge to worry about this and that, this and that. Um, and as he's backed into a corner. So you might think he would crack under the pressure, but he's like a wild animal. So when you corner him, he's going to tear your face off kind of thing. Uh, then we had a Bianca Belair backstage interview um, where she talks about how she'll have to beat the best to be the EST of Mania. Um Asuka comes by and congratulates Bianca, um, but says, you know, congratulations, but you're not ready for Asuka. Bianca says, no, I'm ready for Asuka, but Lacey's not ready for Asuka. And hey, Lacey, if you take care of business at Chamber, then maybe you might see a little bit more of me on Raw. Just a quick little thing to get Bianca on Raw uh, to, you know, build suspense for her decision. I really hope that they don't, like, the obvious choice is Sasha and Bianca. That would be incredible. I don't think you need to put more people on Raw from SmackDown. I, I think Bianca is the obvious choice for SmackDown um, for Sasha at Mania. So, yeah. Um, 
Just a quick little interview segment just to, you know, get Bianca on the show. Then we had Riddle versus Keith Lee. MVP was on commentary. They kept asking about what he thought about Keith Lee, and he kept saying that Lashley is bigger. I'm hoping that they, this, like, is the start of a, like, kind of slow burn to getting Keith Lee in the Hurt Business eventually. I'd really like that. Um, the match itself was very good. Um, it's the kind of match that I like most in wrestling where it's, it's hard hitting, high impact. You have some actual wrestling moves being done. Like I don't get me wrong. The athletic flippy shit can be very entertaining. Um, but I prefer like the mat wrestling and the heavy strikes and, and, you know, the suplexes and the, and the power bombs and shit like that. Like the hard hitting, um, more mat based kind of stuff is my, uh, particular, um, preference for, for wrestling. Um, so they knocked it out of the park with a nice high, uh, hard hitting match. Keith Lee gets a clean win. Um, afterwards, they you know kind of like bump fists, shake hands, and like kind of you know they're like, hey, good job, good job, show respect. Lashley though attacks Keith um, into Riddle, who bumps out of the ring, um, pretty much like deadlifted, not deadlifted, but like um, he attacked he attacked Keith. He got him with like a. <sighs> It's, it's not really a choke bomb, but, like, you know when somebody shoots off the ropes and the guy puts his hand on his chest and kind of lifts up and, like, slams him? One of those things, which I don't know the name of. Um, he did that. Then he uh, put the hurt lock on Riddle, then threw Riddle back to the side, and then went back to Keith uh, a little bit on the outside. Hits Keith with the steps. Uh, who He sends Keith onto the table with the steps, and then Keith rolls off the table into where the commentators sit, and then Lashley stands on the table lifting the U.S. championship, and Lashley is pissed. And I am here for pissed off Bobby Lashley, my guy. Pissed off Bobby Lashley. Holy shit, he's good, bruh. This is the Lashley we got in TNA in like 2015, and this is the Lashley we should have been getting in WWE since he came back. Not the fucking bullshit, hey, I love my sister's garbage. Not the, hey, look at my ace garbage. Not the, hey, I slept with your wife garbage. The fucking, hey, I'm gonna murder you because I want to be the best and kill people and I want to make money by being champion, so I'm going to kill you because I don't give a fuck, and I can. That's the Lashley we like. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm all here for uh, Angry Lashley. It gets announced later in the card that uh, Riddle versus Keith Lee versus uh, Lashley for the U.S. Championship is announced for uh, Elimination Chamber. I don't really get why Riddle is in there. I mean, he lost tonight. He lost last week. He doesn't really need to be involved in a U.S. Championship match. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the match is going to be good anyway, so I don't really mind. Um, I just hope that Lashley keeps the title. I really think that Lashley should be the one to dethrone, uh, Drew. Um, you know, have Drew get through Mania as champion. And then I can't remember when in 2020, um, Drew and Lashley had a, had a match for the title and where, you know, Lashley failed and then MVP kind of recruited him. Right. Um, but I would really like it if they told the story, if the story into Drew dropping the title is a year on from beating Lashley, that loss kind of like changed Lashley and now he's a fucking beast who needs to be tamed um, and Drew can't tame him. And then a year after he loses, which caused his change, he wins the title. You know what I mean? I'd really like for that to be the 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 thing that they, they turn, uh, that they... Um, end up doing with Lashley, give him the WWE title, and then you could have him hold it for a long ass time. Um, I have like a little idea that I would like them to do where Keith Lee joins the Hurt Business. Uh, Keith Lee wins the US Championship once Lashley is done with it. Um, and then when Lashley wins the title, have him defend the title against every challenger they have, and then get to the point where the only challenger left is Keith Lee, and then you can do a little mini breakup of the Hurt Business kind of thing. But I'm talking like for next year's Mania kind of thing, like around Rumble season, start sowing the seeds, and then boom, you could have Keith Lee versus Lashley at Mania, uh, which, which could be a very, very good match. Um, and then hopefully fucking Lashley and, and uh, Lesnar at SummerSlam. Just two big meaty men fucking beating the shit out of each other. I want that match so bad, brother. As long as Brock loses, I want that match so bad. Uh, but yeah, great match. Um... You know, Lashley looked like a monster afterwards. They set up a title match. All good shit. That's fine. 
then they showed a Randy and Drew video package. Uh, then Randy had a promo where he talks about how he has unfinished business with Drew. Drew took his title, but Randy will take it back at Elimination Chamber. Uh, Randy says that he'll do what it takes to get the title back uh, because it means everything to him. Uh, he lists the actions that he's done. If it means I have to do this and this and that, his actions end unfinished business for him, and he'll be walking to Mania as champion. And then we had Nia uh, versus Lana in a tables match. Um, they did a little recapping showing all the nine table spots between Lana and Nia, uh, you know, in the buildup. Lana looks like she's about to cry. Like, she looks so scared that she's going to cry. I don't really like that look. Um, she should be worried. She should be scared because she's small and not very good. And Naya is very big and also not very good. But she legitimately injures people. Uh, so she shouldn't be employed. Um, so, like, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine with her looking scared. But, but her being so scared that she's about to cry isn't really that what I think they should have gone with for her um, because she has her opportunity to get revenge on Naya and put her through a table after being put through a table nine times. So I think what they should have done with her in terms of her facials is um, have her be a little bit scared at first and then kind of just be like, you know what, throughout the match, just be like, you know what, nah, I'm fucking pissed. You put me through that table nine goddamn times. I'm putting you through this shit now. I might be scared, but I'm fucking doing everything I can to get revenge on you. So I think that's probably what they should have done, which they didn't really do. But anyways, um, near the end of the match, they had a they had a thing where Nia misses the leg drop on the apron, and she's like, ooh, my ace, ooh, my ace, ooh, my hole, which social media loved. Um, she flips over a table because she's mad and in anger, and then she kind of walks away uh, towards the corner of the barricade where the bar barricade curves, you know what I mean? Um, and then Lana's like, oh shit, she runs and pushes her through a table that was set up there and wins the match. She's celebrating with Naomi, who was with her, by the way, because Shayna was with out there with uh, Nia. And uh, Shayna attacks Lana after the match, and then Naomi attacks Shayna, and then Shayna's out of the ring, and she's like, ooh, and then Naomi's like, get in here, bitch, I'll fuck you up, and then Shayna's like, ah, you suck, dude, um, and then they go to commercial, they came back to Naomi versus Shayna, and in an in, 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 in impromptu match, um, where Nia was sent to the back for treatment, uh, Nia fucking is huge, I don't think you would need to send her back for treatment after being pushed through a table when you have matches where guys go through tables and then win matches. You know what I mean? Like someone of her build should not be needed to, I actually, I accidentally just hit my mic. Apologies. Uh, somebody of her size shouldn't need to be sent to the back for medical attention after doing a table bump. Um, you know what I mean? As much as I hate her, it just doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, also I hate impromptu matches. If you wanted to do Naomi versus Shayna, do it next week. Wow. Crazy thought. And then, oh, Tag team title match at Elimination Chamber. Wow. It's almost like simple booking fucking makes sense. Um, but anyways, um, Naomi versus Shayna, it was fine for, for the length that they were given. They weren't really given much time. I think it was less than five minutes. Um, they, they had a, they had a spot where when Shayna was in control, she goes outside to attack Lana because Lana was trying to give words of encouragement to Naomi. Um, I think Shayna had put in the curfew to clutch, um, and then, uh, Naomi got to the ropes and then Lana was like, oh, you got this, you got this, um, Shayna goes out, attacks Lana, throws her into the barricade. As she's entering the ring, she still kind of has one eye on uh, Lana. Naomi rolls her up one, two, three, and uh, Naomi gets a win. Now, um, excuse me for the paper. Now, Naomi getting a loss would have been a big mistake after... I'm not a big Naomi fan. Um, if you've been around for a while and uh, you remember some of like my Mania prediction videos and stuff like that, you'll know that I'm not the biggest Naomi fan. I think she's very athletic. I think she's okay in the ring. But as somebody who is a top star in the women's division, I don't really see that in her. Um, but with that aside, given that I don't really hold Naomi that high in regard. Um, having her lose a singles match uh, a couple weeks after coming back, probably not a good idea. You kind of need her to win to keep her strong, right? 
She picked up the win against Asuka last week, which again wasn't needed. She could have just pinned uh, Mandy or Dana, but whatever. I'm still upset about that. However, what I do have a problem with is them feeding Shayna to every fucking baby face they feel like giving a push. They're like, oh, hey, we think you might get a push. Here, go beat, go beat Shayna. You know what I mean? And a roll-up victory off of being distracted and stuff like that here and there, yeah, that works. Um... But I feel like that's how Shayna just loses every week. It's her getting distracted or her getting outsmarted. They they kind of make Shayna look like an idiot on a weekly basis. And it's like, hey, you fucking morons. She's a star in your division. She should be at least. And you have her a second fiddle to somebody who shouldn't even be employed in your company in Nia Jax. So, like, why not do... Why not have, like, Naomi kind of get involved in, like, trip uh, Naya and then, you know, that allows um, Lana to put her through a table. And then next week, you could have Naomi versus uh, uh, Naya. And then you could have Naya lose uh, by getting outsmarted because I don't give a fuck if she gets outsmarted. She shouldn't be employed. Um, and then you could be like, oh, okay, whatever. They could attack them afterwards to get heat back. And then, oh shit, tag team match. Like, why do you, why, why do they feel the need to feed Shayna to everybody? Shayna should be in the title picture, man. Not in some fucking makeshift tag team with Naya getting dragged down by her. Fuck, man, that pisses me off. They gave, they they should have had her win the Rumble last year, and they didn't. They gave her an impressive Elimination Chamber just to have her lose to Becky, which was fucking stupid. And I'm a big Becky Lynch fan. But having Becky go over at Mania last year made absolutely no fucking sense. Shayna was fucking coming off of eliminating everybody in an Elimination Chamber, which I think, men's or women's, is the first time that's ever been done. You booked her like a monster in the chamber to just turn around and be like, oh, hey, Becky wins. Oh, by the way, Becky's going to go for maternity leave in a second. Like, why? What, what was the fucking point, man? It doesn't, like, I don't understand why Vince doesn't see what he has in Shayna. Shayna's an incredible asset to have in that division. As a heel in that division, she's an incredible asset. I really don't understand why they don't see that. You know what I mean? Lacey's getting a tag team. Uh, Lacey's getting a women's championship match at Elimination Chamber. Lacey can barely cut a good promo, and can't really wrestle. In my opinion, I don't. I don't really like Lacey Evans. She's getting a women's championship against Oscar. It wouldn't surprise me if she wins the title and they do Lacey and Charlotte at WrestleMania. You know what I mean? I hope that's not what they're going to do. I don't think they will, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do. Um. So, like, but Shayna has to be stuck with Nia and has to be fed to people week in, week out. And has to take the pins for Nia in the tag team matches. And can't get the pins or submission wins for Nia in tag team matches. Nia has to look strong, but Shayna has to look weak. Really? That's Shayna fucking Baszler, man. She should be a top person in your women's division. It just boggles my mind. Because she's so fucking good. And they don't see it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, but anyways, we go into the main event of the evening, which is Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton, uh, which started when there was like 15 minutes left in the show. Then we had entrances. Then a couple minutes in, Sheamus's music hits. He runs down, acts like he's going to go in the ring, stops. Drew gets distracted. Randy capitalizes, throws Drew out of the ring. We go to commercial. We come back. Uh, they wrestle for a little bit more. I think there's another commercial. Uh, Sheamus is watching from the commentary table at this point. And uh, for the finish... Sheamus tries to bro kick Drew uh, while him and Randy are in the ring. Uh, Drew moves out of the way. He bro kicks Randy, and um, and then Drew Claymore Sheamus, and then we go off the air, kind of with Drew kind of standing tall. Um, so DQ loss for Drew. And um, like I get what they're probably trying to do is set up Randy and uh, and Sheamus for next week, right? That's that's fine, right? I don't really care if you want to do that. That's going to be a fine match. Both guys can wrestle pretty well. That's fine. Um, here, here's, 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 here's my issue. Um, you don't need to protect Randall Keith Orton in 2021. The guy is a Hall of Fame candidate, first ballot Hall of Famer it's in the future. The guy's, what, 13, 14 time champion now after the recent win against Drew that he lost two weeks later because I don't that didn't make any sense. Like, 
This guy is a is a Grand Slam champion, I'm pretty sure. Multiple time world champion. Part of maybe the best faction in history, because honestly, I think there's a claim for legacy, not legacy, fuck, legacy was not good. <laughs> um, evolution. There's a claim for evolution being um, the best uh, faction in history, in my opinion. Um, so it, part of one of the best factions of all time. Um, he had an incredible feud with Randy. He's Randy with Undertaker. He's He's a Hall of Famer right? He, if he retired now, he could be in the Hall of Fame class for this mania. He's just, he's, he's there. Why are you giving him a DQ win over Drew in 2021 on Raw? You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to do that. Just have Drew beat him clean and then have Sheamus go for the attack afterwards. And then, you know, Drew moves and then boom, Claymore, whatever. He goes off the show the same way. Or, you know what I mean? Have Sheamus try to screw Drew over, have it backfire and have Randy, whatever. You know what I mean? And then have uh, Drew pin Randy after him and Sheamus argue for a bit. And then next week be like, hey, Sheamus, I had that match covered until you try to get involved. I'm going to beat your ass. Like, or, you know, um, just have the general manager or the Adam Pierce or whatever the fuck. Just have them book Drew versus Sheamus next week without anything to set it up. They're participants in the Elimination Chamber. It makes sense when you have a multi-man match at a pay-per-view to have parts of that match face each other in singles competition to lead up to it. It's just logical booking. You don't need the interference to set up Randy and and and, and Sheamus next week because guess what? They're in a match for the title multi-man literally a, uh, the Sunday after this one, right? The coming Sunday, when it's next week's Raw, it'll be this Sunday, right? When you have them set up for a match, multi-man for the title, six days away, you can book people in that match in singles as a as a preview or as a preparation without any storyline to cause it. You know what I mean? I get wanting to have the storyline to cause it because then you have more cause, um, but you you only really need to have the storyline cause for a match if there's no multi-man match kind of coming up. You know what I mean? If if it, like if you want to put somebody over by facing them that person and it doesn't make sense to just book them together, oh shit, have them do this with this person, bada boom, bada bing, there you go, you have cause. But you don't need the you don't need the extra bullshit because you have cause for that match without the extra bullshit because they're in the same match six days away. You don't need the interference to be like, oh, hey, you know, you hit me last week. I'm going to get you back, Seamus. No, they have a match. Guess what? You want people to be excited for your show. Have people in the match fight each other to preview what it'll be. It's just you don't need to protect Randy with a DQ win over uh, uh, Drew by having Seamus get involved. You don't need it. Randy doesn't need protection in 2021. You know what I'm saying? Uh, actually, I'll take that back. He maybe needed protection from that fucking atrocity of a Rumble performance where he faked an injury a few minutes in and then came back to get eliminated after by an, by an exhausted fucking half-dead edge. That was shit. That was fucking garbage. They made him look like shit there. But in a singles match with your fucking champion, you don't need him to be protected in 2021. Just have Drew win clean. It puts Drew over. Drew's beaten him clean before. Have him do it again. And then have Sheamus kind of get in for the bro kick. And then boom, okay, yeah, I saw it coming. Shamo gets out of the way. Claymore, boom. You can end the same way with him hitting a Claymore and, and standing tall with the title. You can end the same way without the protective finish of, of Randy that gives Drew, your champion, a loss in the record books. You know what I mean? Like... Because Drew literally cut a promo saying, hey, he knows he's got targets on his back. He knows people are circling him like a shark. So he would be aware of post-match attacks. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like Sheamus is out there for support and Sheamus didn't uh, turn yet. Sheamus turned last week. Sheamus is out there. He should know that the person Sheamus is would try and attack him after the match. So it would make sense just, oh, Sheamus tries to attack him after the match. Guess what? Saw it coming, buddy. Bada boom, bada bing, Claymore. You end the same way. You end the same way of standing tall with Sheamus. Or uh, Drew standing tall, getting comeuppance with the Claymore after the brogue from last week. That's fine. That storytelling is fine. 
right? Sheamus trying to get another uh, cheap shot and Drew seeing it coming, or not Drew seeing it coming because that's not what they actually did, but Drew actually getting a shot on him. That is, that's logical storytelling, sure. You don't need to protect, you don't need to protect Randy in the process though. Like, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, overall though, uh, Raw wasn't bad. Um, I, I was worried that it might be uh, but it was actually kind of okay. Um, like I said, the Charlotte and Lacey stuff was garbage. Um, I don't like the, the booking of the Elimination Chamber, just having former champions be put in there because they're former champions. Like I said, I think they missed out on a lot of storytelling capabilities this week. Um, and next week, and if they would have announced it last week, they could have added some matches to last week. Um, but, you know, Ali and, and Kofi could have been advanced beautifully with qualifiers and shit like that. Uh, Keith and Drew and Sheamus could have been advanced with qualifiers. Um, you know what I mean? So it's just, uh, yeah. Um, overall, though, maybe like a 7 out of 10 show. I thought it was decent. I, I enjoyed most of it. Um Riddle and Keith Lee beating the shit out of each other was nice. AJ and Jeff having a good uh, wrestling match with really good psychology. I liked, um, once again, Charlotte and Lacey sucked. Um, I didn't like Naomi beating Shayna in an impromptu match. I don't like that. Um, Lana getting the win over Nia is is good. She she pay, They paid off that angle. That's fine. Um, overall, decent show. Um, but like I said, I you don't need to protect Randy. The, the Charlotte and Lacey shit was just absolute garbage. Um, I didn't like Shayna being fed in an impromptu match. Um, and then just the logic of the chamber and how it's set up, I didn't like. So I'll give it a seven out of ten this week. Uh, not a bad show by any means. Just uh, a couple minor things that I that I had issues with. One very 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 major thing that I had issue with. Um, and then a couple things where it's not the end of the world that they're doing the elimination chamber the way that they're doing. Like we still get a good match. You still have good wrestlers in that match. Um, so it's fine, right? Um, it's not the end of the world. It's not like they're making this huge fucking mistake with the elimination chamber. It's just they're missing out on um, they're missing out on so much better things that they could be doing by doing the elimination chamber the way that they are doing it. So um, unfortunately, yeah, uh, they miss, they kind of missed a lot of opportunities there. But uh, overall, though, like I said, probably a seven out of ten for me for Raw. Uh, decent show, nothing too special, but nothing bad at all, which is nice. That's I, that's two weeks of Raw in a row that I think have been good, uh, or just haven't been shit, I guess, more specifically. So um, hopefully, we keep that up going up until Mania, and then we'll go back to shit shows every week until maybe SummerSlam. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Raw was okay. Uh, like I said, for the millionth time, probably 7 out of 10 for me. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the show down below in the comments. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Did you agree with some of the things I said? Did you disagree? Let me let me know everything you guys got to say down in the comments. Um, once again, if you'd like to support me in the channel, you can do so over at Patreon. First link in the description. Um, if not, that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Link in the description also. Please sponsor me PST. Obligatory PST sponsor me gimmick. Uh, gotta, gotta shove that in there. Uh, be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss an episode because YouTube likes to zuck your boy and not put my videos in your sub boxes. So by pressing that nice old bell icon, you will get a push notification anytime I do upload and you'll never have to miss it. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to check out some of the other shit I do on the channel, I do gameplay stuff primarily. Um, I have a GM mode series where I actually book storylines. So if you're if you're watching this um, and you're still watching at the end of the video, which is probably a bit rare if, if you're not already a subscriber, if you're new and you're watching this and you're like, oh, this guy criticizes a lot, but I, he couldn't do it, uh, I book storylines on that series. So if you'd like to see how I book storylines, you can go over there. If you don't like how I book shit, you can talk shit about me. And if you like how I book shit, then subscribe and, you know, uh, stay tuned for more. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, primarily gameplay stuff on the channel, so go check that out. Uh, and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, share it to all your friends, comment down below, all that good shit. And I'll see you guys next time.